I know this report wouldn't be complete without a thorough description of exactly how one Hollywood family spends Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So a few hours ago, I took my tape recorder out to the Brentwood home of Joan Crawford. Miss Crawford and her four children have graciously consented to tell all of us exactly the way in which they'll spend this holiday weekend. The broadcast marks the radio debut for Miss Crawford's eldest children, and they are as excited about it as any youngsters would be. So now, let's hop into an imaginary sleigh and whisk out to the home of one of the foremost actresses in America today, Miss Joan Crawford. Now we're settled in the living room of Miss Joan Crawford's tastefully decorated home. A colorful Christmas tree at one edge of the room is almost snowed under with packages. Across the white carpet on the other wall, a stately colonial fireplace is prepared for the flames that will be warming the room before long, and the mantle is waiting for the Christmas stockings. Miss Crawford and her children are seated on one Davenport facing me. Miss Crawford, my listeners and I are so pleased that you've invited us in to share a few moments of this Christmas Eve with you. We're very happy to have you with us, George. Suppose you start, Miss Crawford, by introducing your children to our radio audience. This is my eldest daughter, Christina. Hello, everyone. And my son, Christopher. Hi, everybody. And my twins, Cynthia and Kathy, who will content themselves with smiling for your <laughs> listeners since they're not quite three. Hello, Cynthia and Kathy. And how old are you, Christina? I'm ten, Mr. Fisher. And Christopher, you're certainly growing up fast. How old are you? I was just seven, Mr. Fisher. Christina, is this lovely big colonial fireplace the spot where you hang your stockings tonight? Yes, we get to hang them from the mantle just before bedtime. Will there be four stockings, one for each child, or does your mother have to hang up a stocking, too? Oh, we insist that Mother hang up her stocking right beside ours. Christopher, are the stockings always full when you wake up? Sure, Santa Claus fills them up while we're asleep. Have you ever tried to sneak downstairs and catch St. Nick at work? Oh, no. He won't come to our house if we're awake. That's a fancy tree here in the corner of the room. Who decorated it? We all did! Except Mummy had to put the decorations on the top where we couldn't reach. Miss Crawford, here's a question that will interest every parent in America. At what hour do you suppose the youngsters will awaken tomorrow morning? Now, I'm afraid they're likely to be awakening up by 6.30 at the latest. Will they come straight into your room and awaken you? I'd be disappointed if they didn't. Christmas morning is the favorite day of the year for all of us. Well, do you try to get your children to eat breakfast before they start opening their presents? Yes, I've always insisted they eat before coming into the Christmas tree. Every other morning of the year, they dawdle over their food. But Christmas morning, oh, breakfast is the quickest meal on record. <laughs> Christina, do you and your brother and sister send presents to lots of people at Christmas time? Yes, we do. But besides giving to our friends, we like to send presents every year to boys and girls in other countries across the ocean. And I suppose you receive all sorts of gifts from people you don't even know. Oh, yes. People who see Mummy in the movie send us lots of lovely things. They're so nice, George, remembering the children every year. It's easy to see, looking over the gigantic group of packages under the tree now, that the youngsters will have enough presents to keep them busy for months. Yes. You see, I don't let them have all their presents at one time. They'll get to play with them all, you know, all day tomorrow. And then we put a large group of them aside. From tomorrow on, they earn their gifts. How do you mean they earn them? Well, if they stay on their good behavior, they're given their choice of what present they want next. Christopher had his birthday in October, and he still hasn't received all of his presents. I suppose you give away a good many things. We don't give away any of the Christmas presents. I don't think that would be fair to the people who send them. But what we do do is to have a complete house cleaning three times a year. Every plaything, every article of clothing is carefully gone over and large bundles go to the children's homes and hospitals. Do the children help you with this? Oh, yes. I think it's excellent training for them. I always see to it that they give up something they really love. Otherwise, they don't really learn the value of giving. Uh, Christopher, what one thing do you want more than anything else to be in one of your packages tomorrow morning? A pair of Hoplon Cassidy guns. And Christina, what do you hope St. Nick leaves for you? More than anything else in the world, I'd like a collie dog like Lassie. Uh, Miss Crawford, could you tell us what you would call your most exciting Christmas? I think the happiest moment of my life was the Christmas the children came into our home. I don't see how any home can be complete without children, or how any Christmas can be really enjoyed without youngsters around. Now suppose you tell us what's going to happen for the rest of the evening after I leave you. Well, 
uh, Cynthia and Kathy will be off to bed pretty quickly. But I've discovered that there's no point in trying to get Christine and Christopher to bed for hours. They're too excited. They couldn't possibly sleep. So they'll help me with last-minute things, and we'll talk about tomorrow and watch the Christmas tree lights. Then in a little while, we'll welcome some of the children's friends who will be in to help us sing Christmas carols. I imagine we'll sing Jingle Bells even before Cynthia and Kathy go to sleep. <laughs> Christina, what's your favorite Christmas time song, dear? My favorite Christmas song is O Little Town of Bethlehem. And Christopher, what's yours? Away in a Manger. And we'll all want to know your favorite, too, Miss Crawford. I think I've always loved Silent Night best, George. Well, then when your friends leave, Christopher, what happens? Mother reads to us. Yes, we're reading the Christmas Carol this year. Helen Hayes sent us about four years ago a beautifully illustrated copy of Dickens' Christmas Carol, and it's one of our most prized possessions. I started to read it to them last year, but Christopher couldn't take it. It was too scary for him. <laughs> He's a bigger boy this year, though, so we started it several weeks ago, and we'll finish it tonight. And then, surely, you finish up by reading "Twas the Night Before Christmas. Oh, no Christmas Eve would be complete without that. Do you remember the last two lines? I do. So do I. Well, then, as a Christmas present to all of us, do you suppose you could say those lines for us? And I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. And a Merry Christmas to you, Kathy, Cynthia, Christopher, and Christina, and of course to you, Miss Joan Crawford. Thanks again for allowing all of us to share a part of your Christmas Eve. Thank you so much, George. Merry Christmas to you and to all your listeners. <laughs>